Okay, so I'm going to uh, try a uh, working session here. Uh, I'll probably have to edit this, obviously. The goal here is to demonstrate a couple of things. One is the advanced voice mode of OpenAI. Any of you who are Plus or Team subscribers and have downloaded the app onto your uh, mobile device have access to it. Now, you should have downloaded the mobile app a long time ago because it's, it's probably one of the best ways to interact. Um, but if you haven't, certainly now is the time because it's the only way you're gonna get access to the advanced voice mode. If you're not familiar with what that is, don't worry, this, familiar, this video will help you out. So my thought here is I want to basically demonstrate using the advanced voice mode for first year associates, new lawyers, law students to basically create a mini micro GPT based mentor, LLM based mentor, gen AI based mentor, whatever it is you want to call it. We know that getting access to helpful mentor coach like information that both helps navigate the substance of an area of law, as well as just the norms and behaviors and sort of heuristics of practicing law, getting access to that as a new lawyer is really challenging. It's really uneven and very unpredictable. Um, so part of what I want to do here is just give you a glimpse as to what we might be able to do with this. Now, there's, there's much more um, complex, uh, sophisticated, elegant ways of doing this. Uh, in the class that I'm teaching at um, Indiana University's Maurer School of Law, where I'm on faculty, the last four weeks of the semester is going to be focused on getting the students to build their own GPT-based mentor. But this is a lightweight version. But I want to just, A, show this to you conceptually and also functionally so you can kind of play with this. So um, I'm going to do a couple of things here. I'm going to assume that you're relatively a beginner, novice, not an advanced user of generative AI and certainly of open AI's uh, stack, if you will. So just to recall, uh, what you see on my screen here is I, I have a Mac, so I'm using the native version of ChatGPT. I'm not using the web-based version of ChatGPT. And you're going to see why in a second, um, mainly that I cannot... Um, with the web-based, you can't really get, you can't speak to it um, the same way you can with the uh, native version. So you could always do this on your mobile phone, but just that's always tough for me to record at the same time. Um, so I just want to show you how to use this. Now, the other thing I want to show you is recall that in ChatGPT, you can do something called custom instructions. Now, this is where you're basically telling the AI things that you want it to remember from conversation to conversation, right? So often, if you, if you follow me, you know that I follow the five Ps of prompting. The first one, priming, right, is we have to give it context. And if you've seen me interact or you've taken classes by me, you know that I give it a lot of information. Well, a way to shortcut that is to use custom instructions. Um, and I'll show you why here in a second. Now, I generally have them turned off. And the reason why is because I use this in a multitude of ways throughout the day. And so they became an impediment to me. And I've just gotten so comfortable interacting with it that I can, I can give it the context I need when working with it. But for some people um, who are not there yet, this is a really helpful way. So we're going to use custom instructions here as our first building block for um, our GPT-based mentor. So uh, for this, I am going to play the role of a first-year associate starting in a mid-size to large law firm uh, who may or may not have access, or even if they do have access to a mentor, they don't have them in real time, or maybe they're afraid or embarrassed and ask certain questions. So uh, I'm going to use ChatGPT to help me sort of build this. So let's watch. So I am a first year associate in a mid-sized law firm. Um, 
And we have mentors and training, but to be honest with you, I'm trying to do something here that is builds my, my own resource, my own mentor or coach um, that I can go to. And um, I need your help in building custom instructions, your custom instructions. And so, as you know, there's two questions. What is it that I, you should know about me? And then how do I want you to reply? And both... Um, I believe you can use up to, yeah, 1,500 uh, characters. Uh, So just keep that in mind. So I guess the first thing um, I'll ask you is, is how do I, how do I answer the first question? What what should you know about me? I mean, my goal is to use you ultimately as a coach or mentor. So give me some questions to answer um, that'll help you sort of fill in a really good uh, answer to that first question. Um, let's start that first and then we'll do the second question. Okay. So, uh, you heard me sort of just ramble there. Um, here it just did the, the voice to text. I'm going to see what it comes back with here. Um, okay. So this gave me some, uh, some good things to think about. Now I'd want to obviously consider these, um, okay. And let's see here. Uh, all right. So I will try to, uh, use this and, um, we'll go forward. Okay. That's really helpful. Um, so I'm going to try to address some of these questions that you gave me and then use that to craft, um, the first, uh, answer to the first custom instruction. Remember that 1500 character limit, please. So yeah, like I said, I'm a first year associate. Um, My career goals is obviously to be successful here in a large law firm. Um, Hopefully you know what it means to be successful as a new associate. Uh, I am in the, on the corporate side. I'm not a litigation uh, lawyer, but uh, I I basically had zero transactional experience coming out of law school. Um, I just really want to be really helpful and effective. I don't want to bother partners at all, but I want to ask the right questions at the right time. Um, my current responsibilities and challenges, I'm still learning them, but basically I'm taking, taking requests and instructions from partners and senior associates to do some basic research. Um, and I, th- I think they sort of have, you know, they've put training wheels on me. Um, I'm learning to bill my time appropriately. I've got no chance of talking to a client anytime soon, I don't think. Um, you know, the workload is intense, but I'm really excited. Uh, you know, I'm happy to have a job. I'm happy to be in this job and in this firm. Um, my strengths really are, uh, has been my communication. I'm not the strongest writer, But as far as like putting me in a room with people, regardless of the partners, associates or clients, like I've always been a a very adept and um, confident speaker. I know how to read the room, but it's really tough for me to articulate my ideas in writing. And as you can imagine, a lot of things happen via email here. So I've got to be really mindful of that. My work preference and style is you know, I do deep work and then I need to take like a break uh, to refresh my cognitive um, sort of energy. And then the way I learn best, I mean, I think the, the best way to describe it is um, through example, uh, analogy, rather than just like spelling something out step by step. It's very helpful for me to associate or relate that to something. Um, my relationship with my colleagues and mentors, I mean, I don't have an official mentor. I've got, you know, some partners that are in my practice area that have been very helpful, but they're busy and I don't want to bother them. Um, One partner seems to be very um, less friendly uh, than another, uh, but, you know, I'm still new and trying to figure that out. So, yeah, uh, that's kind of really, uh, that's it. So can you create a really good custom instruction for yourself? Yeah, it's uh, taking that. It's taking that voice and um, transcribing it basically into text. Once it does that, uh, this is fairly accurate, by the way. So I don't I don't really review this word for word. These are all my words. Um, Just do that. It will hopefully take this uh, and turn it into something. 
All right, that's pretty good. So I'm just gonna grab that and I'm going to take it over to the web version. And I'm gonna do that, look at that. And it's got some room left. Okay, so now we're gonna tackle how would you like ChatGPT to respond? So, all right, that was really helpful. I'm gonna use that one. Now the next question is how I would like you to respond. Um, and so I, I need help creating a custom instruction for that. I don't really know what that means. So can you give me some sense for how to best address that and, and, and use that custom instruction? So there, again, I just ask it. If you don't know, if you're not sure, just ask it. See what it comes up with. Okay, so it's about setting the tone, the style, approach that you want ChatGPT to use when actor, uh, interacting with you. So these are some of the things. Um, okay yeah i mean actually this is pretty good i'm just going to grab this to be honest with you okay i'm going to make sure enable for new chats click save okay custom instructions are now on now it should be throughout whether i'm using it here with a new chat or i'm gonna pull it up and use this in a second um so there you go uh, we've got our custom instructions good to go. So I opened up my app and there's an old uh, thing there, uh, old chat, if you will. I'm just gonna verify here that my custom instructions are on and that they're here. Yes, they're there, they're, they're now in the app. So even though I did it on the web, they're automatically in the app, so they're there. So what I'm about to do it's going to take that into consideration, no matter what context I give you, it, uh, I give it, and it's going to use that. So, all right, I'm going to activate uh, advanced voice mode. I'm going to press, well, it's right there. You'll see. Okay. That's the screen you're going to get. Hey, chat GPT. Um, so, as you know, from my custom instructions, I'm a first year associate and um, I need some help. I just got an assignment from a partner and uh, hoping you can sort of, be my coach and mentor here. Absolutely. I'd be glad to help out. What's the assignment about and how can I assist you in tackling it? Well, I got an email from this partner and it's the partner that, I don't know, they seem fine, but they seem a little edgy. They're not all that helpful. They're very sort of crisp and to the point. I don't get the warm fuzzies from them. So I don't want to screw this up, but basically I got an email related to a client matter. I don't know this client, it's just a name, but um, I know that the partner asked me basically to sketch out the draft LOI for this deal. And I don't really know what an LOI is. Um, I don't know if I call it a letter of intent, a letter of interest, but that's about all I know. So kind of just get me, like how, how do I even think about an LOI and what it is? Well, what's the proper name? It's actually letter of intent, or LOI for short. Think of an LOI like a getting to know you stage in a business deal. It outlines the basic terms and conditions of a deal before the final documents are drawn up. Kind of like setting the ground rules before the real game begins. The LOI is non-binding, meaning it's not the final say, but more of a handshake agreement. It usually covers the key points of a deal, like the price, timeline, due diligence, and any conditions that need to be met. For your draft, start by introducing the parties involved, lay out the purpose of the LOI, and then dive into the main terms. Be clear and concise, and make sure to highlight that this is a preliminary document to avoid any confusion. That's really helpful. Thanks. Um, I didn't know they were non-binding. I thought it might be like creating the initial terms of the contract. So that's helpful. Thank you. Um, the other question I have is, are these written like a contract? Are they written like a memo, like a letter in like a narrative form? Like what's or shouldn't I even be worrying about that right now based on what the partner asked me to do? Great question. An LOI typically has a formal tone, blending elements of a letter and a contract. It's not as detailed as a contract, but more structured than a memo. You generally start with a brief introduction, then move into bullet points or numbered sections for each key term. 
This includes the deal structure, purchase price, due diligence, and closing conditions. The aim is clarity and brevity, not the fine print you'd find in a full contract. For now, focus on outlining the major points in a clear, organized manner. Getting the tone and structure right can come later with feedback from the partner. All right, so you just used a term that I hear and heard all the time through law school and since joining. But to be honest, I have no idea what it means in this context. So you said there should be a section on due diligence. What, what should I even no attempt? Work. What should I even attempt in that section? Sure thing. Due diligence is basically the homework phase of a deal. It's where the buyer investigates the seller's business to understand what they're getting into. In your LOI, the due diligence section would outline what information and documents the buyer needs to review. Think financial records, contracts, employee agreements, and anything else relevant to the business's operations and health. Your section should specify timelines for this process and who bears the cost. It's like setting the terms for a very thorough background check. Just provide a high-level overview of what's expected. Okay, um, that's helpful. I have no, uh, no clue what this deal has in terms of that. So here's a question for you. Like, how much time should I spend doing that or figuring that out? Now, the partner sent me the billing name um, so I can go look up the, the case files in this and do all that. I don't know if I should just go do that. Should I follow up with a partner and basically say, listen, I, I'm, uh, I'll, I can tackle everything else, but the due diligence part I might have a question on just to get started. Like, what's your advice there? Given the partner's crisp style, it's wise to show initiative while also being efficient. Start by reviewing the case files to get a sense of the deal, focusing on any sections related to due diligence. This will prepare you to ask informed questions. Then, follow up with the partner, acknowledging that you started your review and asking if there are specific areas or documents they want you to prioritize. This shows you're proactive, but also respect their guidance. So when I go back to the partner with that question, should I send them the draft LOI I have at that point, or should I just go back with that question and like let them know I'm in the process of, of drafting um, and focused on that section at this time. I'd recommend going back with your question first without sending the draft LOI just yet. Let the partner know you're in the process of drafting and wanted to clarify the due diligence expectations to ensure accuracy. This approach keeps the partner in the loop and gives you a chance to confirm you're on the right track before they see the draft. Once you have their feedback, you can refine your draft accordingly and then present it. All right. I really appreciate it. I will let you know how it goes. Sounds good. Feel free to reach out anytime. Good luck. You got this. Well, there you go. I think... Um, Listen, for any practiced or experienced lawyer, that might be very basic. But I think having spoken to both law students and new associates that have built their own versions, um, they've done, you know, custom GPTs, something to the extent that I just created and even beyond that, that's very helpful. Even if it's just uh, to get a good sense of confidence, validate or reconfirm. So. Wanted to show you that. So what, let's, let's just review real quick. So I showed you, reminded you of custom instructions, showed you that sometimes it's just easier to speak to ChatGPT than it is to type, uh, very natural plain language, and then demonstrated the um, advanced voice mode, which is basically just me talking back and forth uh, with that and using that as basically a GPT-based mentor. Um, Anyway, I, uh, I encourage you to try this. Uh, I'm going to have my students do it this week, and I will report back. Talk to you.